Moving into 2022, I wanted to build like the perfect PC, if it was at all possible. Like literally that one machine that could do it all. 4K gaming, editing, photo and design, even streaming 1440p without losing a frame. I basically wanted to build a dual PC setup killer, and I did, and it's right there. All right, I need to start off this video by saying that it would not be possible without ASUS. They were the ones that actually were able to put together this entire build to work with me on this video. So big shout out to them and all the partners that came together to make this build possible. But basically what happened was towards the end of the year, they were talking about a new series of motherboards that were coming out. One of the new motherboards being the new ProArt Z690 Creator Edition. And while we were talking about these motherboards, I asked them one simple question. Do you think we could build a computer Computer that I could game, stream, edit, do everything from, and still be able to do it all like in 1080p. And they were like, no, you could actually build one from this that could handle 1440p gaming and streaming simultaneously while also being able to edit high-end 4K and 8K work. So I called their bluff and was like, okay, let's let's try to build this. So real quick, before we get into the build, the machine that can handle it all, I wanna get into why I need such an efficient device. Being a full-time content creator just in itself can be challenging. Putting on top of that all these extra machines and cables and devices that we need to do our work more efficiently and of a higher quality every single day, it just gets irritating. It can be very stressful putting all that in the back. So over the last few years, one of the things that I've really been trying to do in my setup and just as an effective creator is just minimize those things. Get rid of things that I just don't need. So that way it's just not taking up clutter and space. Getting that room to breathe as a creator is so useful. So that's why I needed that one machine where I could do my six hour new Apex Legends event stream, finish that stream, edit some content from that stream as like highlights to promote all that side of things and then turn around and still edit things like this, like higher end stuff. Trying to get all of that from one PC is really hard. So again, coming into this year, I didn't think it was possible, especially to do it at resolutions that I personally enjoy. I enjoy having a 4K monitor with very good color calibration. I like gaming at a higher refresh rate and resolution. It's just a more enjoyable experience for me. So being able to do that from one computer, I thought was impossible. So let's get into the build, shall we? All right, so as mentioned, the base of this is a ProArt Z690 Creator Wi-Fi motherboard. This motherboard is designed for Intel 12th core series. It's PCIe 5-point ready and a DDR5 speed boost. Connectivity for content creators, and this is big for me, includes two Thunderbolt 4 Type-C ports, 10 gigabyte and 2.5 gigabyte onboard ethernet, Wi-Fi 6E for PCIe 4.0 M.2 slots, using high-end M.2 slots on your motherboard for all of your, your content or gaming. I, I can't recommend it enough and a USB 3.2 Gen 2x2 front panel connector with quick charge. So as a full-time content creator, having a motherboard that was new enough to be able to get all the new up-to-date hardware and then on top of that had the connectivity features was huge. It was the biggest start. We ended up putting an i9-12900K CPU in this. This thing comes with 16 total cores, including eight performance cores, eight efficient cores, and 24 total threads. Max turbo frequency is five. 5.2 gigahertz. For this machine, I needed to have that perfect balance between a very high-end reliable CPU mixed with a GPU to connect the idea of gaming and streaming. Also on top of that, this helps with the efficiency of editing and render times on this machine as well. When it comes to the graphics card, we are rocking the RTX 3080. For cooling, this graphic card features the new and approved Exil Tech fan design. Each fan is specialized and the center fan's rotation has been reversed. This reduces overall turbulence and boosts the card's overall thermal performance. This allows for the card to run at lower fan speeds while being able to handle a demanding load. And a cool thing about the GPU is it does connect to the Asus Aurora RGB sync. If you guys don't know what that is, it's the software on the machine that actually controls all the RGBs on the entire PC. For the RAM in this, I went with 32 gigabytes of the Kingston Fury DDR5 memory. And for the hard drive in this, I went with a crucial P2 SSD M.2 drive. This whole thing is powered by 
buy an ASUS ROG 1000 watt gold power supply unit. The ROG 1000G is capable of delivering 1000 watts, obviously, of clean power to the graphics card, motherboard, CPU, you name it, the rest of the entire PC. Fully modular cables help with the cable management to keep the PC clean and tidy. For the CPU cooler, and this thing is pretty badass if you ask me, I was a little weary on the first ASUS CPU cooler that I got, but after having that for a couple years now and testing this one out, I'm actually really surprised that people don't talk more about their CPU coolers. But for this one, we're rocking the ASUS ROG Ryzen 2 360 RGB. This all-in-one cooler delivers ultimate thermal performance for all the mainstream CPUs in the market. It can harness both water and air to provide an incredible cooling performance. On top of that, you get this dope little 3.5 LCD panel on the front, which is the largest LCD display on an AIO cooler in the industry. And again, back to the Aurora Sync, you can actually customize what goes on it. Now, when it came to this PC and just my personal preferences, I have like my own branding colors, which is this like Miami vibe. But on the flip side too, I didn't want a PC that was just caked in RGB lighting. I wanted to have this like clean, dark looking machine with a little bit of like my touch to it, but then still had this like minimalist, like black on black look. So for the case, we went with the Lian Lee O11D Evo. This case has so many forms of like modification and being able to take it apart to build around. It's a mid tower chassis with two modes, normal mode and reverse mode. Features multi-directional power button and a movable IO model, front and side tempered glass panels for components and RGB display. It supports three 360 radiators and a maximum of 10 fans. It offers a dual chamber layout with hooks and friendly cable management compartments and just so many areas to manage those pesky cables. Moving on to the fans and this is where I wanted to kind of step away from the typical that was really suggested of me of getting these like crazy RGB fans. I wanted something a little bit more minimal that didn't stand out so that way I could focus on kind of like the hardware being the colors the RGB from it and then just have everything else being the contrast that really makes all that pop. So with the fans I went with seven ROG Strix XF 120s. These fans offer stable stabilized rotors for reduced friction and noise, and they're rated for a 400,000 hour lifespan. They have a minimized acoustic profile, which allows cooling performance and a tune to deliver a smooth and stable sound frequency. On top of that, they come with a five year warranty and these awesome little like rubber screws that I've never seen before. Apparently a lot of people know about these, but I was really new to this because I was shocked when I first found them, but you simply pull these rubber pins through the holes and it holds the fan in place while not creating any noise. Underneath the GPU, you're gonna notice this awesome little GPU holder. With all these new series graphics cards, they are insanely heavy, so I would highly recommend getting some kind of GPU holder or housing unit. For me, I got the ROG ring wall holder. On top of the GPU, you'll also see that I got the Lian Lee Streamer pin cables. And these are just RGB cables that give that effect. They don't really offer, I think, any performance upgrades, but they look really cool, right? So I've had this build up and running for a couple months now. And I guess the big question that a lot of people is gonna ask, can it really hang? The first day that I plugged this in, I wanted to really test it. Like I just wanted to see like where it would fail, like what, how it would fall apart. I was like, surely it cannot do some of the things that ASUS suggested it could do. I had an ASUS 4K 144 Hertz gaming monitor laying around. So I plugged that in and I went live on my gaming YouTube channel with Apex Legends. I was playing Apex Legends at 4K 144 Hertz, obviously on like all the low settings and whatnot, while streaming at 1440p 60 FPS on YouTube and was recording via Shadowplay at 4K 60 FPS all while only dropping two to three frames the entire stream over on YouTube and recording flawlessly through shadow play. I tested that out a few days that week. I was honestly like on this high because I had this one computer hooked up to two monitors and I was able to just do almost more than what I was capable of with two PCs because I was able to just do it all from one machine. So there was like an event going down. I was live, I was gaming, I would stop and I would edit a video. I'd have Premiere open in the back end, editing, rendering, and then I'd switch back to gaming all in the same stream. If this isn't an ideal creator setup, I don't know what is. Now let's obviously talk about the issue in the room. It's hard to get a hold of parts in 2022. A lot of things are on back order. A lot of people are, are scalping things 
buying things in bulk and then overcharging it when it goes out of stock. That is probably the biggest issue from this other than the price of this anyways. A lot of people are gonna say, yes, this PC can do it all, but it's it's very expensive. Personally, for me, my two other machines that I've had for the last couple of years that were a dual PC setup, those two combined were very expensive on top of the audio hardware to connect the two, all the cables to go between the two, powering of two, the managing the two, having again, like I talked about earlier, the stress of having all that clutter between the two as well. So all in all, if you were to ask me what's better, having just two decent machines to just get the job done, or should you save to get that ultimate 2022 PC with just everything new that can be offered, I would hands down recommend going the one PC route, just out of personal preference. Now again, that's just, just how I feel. And that's the great thing about all this is you guys can test everything to your needs and wants. But I'm genuinely curious, has anybody else in 2022 moved into the ultimate one PC setup, getting all the newest devices that every company has to offer? If so, how happy are you guys with your performance and your builds this year? Personally, me, this is probably the last PC that I'll ever need until the demand and bar is obviously raised and I need a new PC again.